Hi, and welcome to this video on binary classification with logistic regression. In the previous couple of videos, I know Stine told you about linear regression. So linear regression is a regression model, while logistic regression is actually a classification model. Before we jump into the details, let's just have a quick overview of what we'll cover in this module. First of all, we'll of course talk about logistic regression. This requires us to first of all talk about what is really binary classification. Secondly, we need to know how to train a logistic regression model in practice. So specifically in the library scikit-learn, how do we actually implement a logistic regression model? Thirdly, we need to understand what's the difference between predicting classes and predicting probabilities. So in scikit-learn, we can both predict classes and probabilities when doing logistic regression, and we really need to understand the difference between these two things. Additionally, we'll talk about evaluating such models. So the question is, how do we really evaluate a logistic regression model? And one of the most common ways of doing this is to use what's called an accuracy score. So we need to delve into what the accuracy score actually is. And I promise you an accuracy score is something that's incredibly intuitive. So this will be no problem for you to learn. And finally, as a bonus, we'll talk a bit about what an estimator is in scikit-learn. So as a small spoiler alert, both logistic regression and linear regression that we dealt with previously are examples of estimators. So I'm really excited for what we're going to do in this module, so let's jump into it in the next video. Hi and welcome back. In this video I'll just show you some slides essentially, and the goal of this video is to understand the difference between binary classification and logistic regression. And additionally to just knowing the difference, you should have a like very broad overview of what each of these terms really mean. Previously with Stina you saw regression problems. So regression problems predict a continuous number, like for example predicting house prices, or predicting disease probability. In binary classification, the output, namely the target value y, are one of two categories. So examples are red or green, another example is won the election or lost the election, and so on. Very often in practice, the categories are encoded as zeros and ones. So in the examples I briefly mentioned, maybe red is zero and green is one, for instance, this encoding is just a kind of simplification device so that it is easier to work with them when you're actually programming. So here you can see kind of a brief schematic. You take some kind of feature here, x, and then you either predict that it's a zero or you predict that it's a one. So notice the difference between this and a regression problem. In a regression problem, you predict this continuous range of values. So in that case, maybe your predictions are one or two, three, four, five, seventeen point five, and so on. Here you only have two options. You either get a zero or you get a one. So before moving on, great to have just many examples of this and there are tons of examples. So here's a few more. So say you're given internet browsing data as the features you have. So maybe more specifically, these features include like how long a person has been logged onto a website, what specific say articles a person looked at within the web page. Then your goal is to predict the sex, either male or female, of the user. In this case, you have essentially two target values for your outputs, male or female. So second example, so given historical stock data as the features, you should either decide if you're going to sell or you're going to keep your stock. This is something that algorithms that deal with stock trading does multiple times a minute. And here again, you have two options, sell or keep. As a final example, given data about a tumor as a feature, decide if it's malignant or benign. Notice in the last examples the similarities between the regression problem for a tumor that Stina told you about, essentially predicting disease probabilities, which is a continuous number, but here we have more of a categorical question or a binary classification question, which is just decide if it's malignant or benign. So this is what binary classification is. But that leads us to what's really logistic regression. So logistic regression is a specific model to do binary classification. So in the same way that linear regression is a specific model for doing a regression problem, then logistic regression is a specific model for doing binary classification. And here you can see kind of a graphical illustration of this. Assume that on the x-axis here, you have one feature, maybe height, and on the y-axis you have another feature, maybe weight. So for each observation that lies within this side here, then you predict a zero. And for each observation that lies within this side here, you predict a one. The line here that separates the two essentially decisions are called a decision boundary. And the goal of logistic regression is to, of course, find this boundary. We want to find such a boundary so that you get this splitting of zeros on one side, ones on the other, in the essentially best possible way. We don't want to misclassify things, we don't want to say that something is a one when it is a zero, and vice versa. 
So let's try to delve a bit deeper into logistic regression and see how it actually works. So in logistic regression, one tries to find what's called a separating function, which I call p of x, such that if you have a new observation x0, if you evaluate your function p at x0 and get less than 0.5, then you should belong to category 0. Conversely, if you get bigger than 0.5, then you should belong to category 1. So essentially this separating function evaluates a new observation and if you get a low value you're a zero, if you get a high value then you're a one. And then you might say yeah so far so good but what really is the separating function? Well specifically for logistic regression and just for simplification if you only have a single feature then this function is on the following form here. So you can see, so it's one over one plus e to the minus, and then parentheses ax plus b, where the training of this logistic regression model finds the best choices for a and b. So to summarize this, logistic regression finds the best values for a and b, given your data, and then we use this function here, with a and b plugged in to decide for a new observation x0 whether you're a 0 or you're a 1. You might have many questions. First of all, why does the function look precisely like this? And I'll come back to this later on. Let's just do a quick example to see if we understand the concept. So say that we have a single feature. Let's say the feature is the size of the tumor. And we want to predict whether the tumor is malignant or benign. So if we have two classes, malignant or benign. If we find out by doing this logistic regression training that a is equal to 2 and b is equal to minus 5, these two parameters, then we essentially ask for a new observation whether p of the new observation is less than 0.5. And you can see here this gives us kind of an equation or really an inequality that we now can solve. So if we solve this then we get x is less than 2.5. You're not supposed to immediately see that this is the answer but you can believe me that if you go around and solve this by say multiplying the denominator up here on the right side and then tricking around and taking the logarithm then you can at least decide to trust me that you get x is less than 2.5. So what does this mean? This means that if x, remember x is the size of the tumor, is less than 2.5 then we predict that the tumor is benign, if it's greater than 2.5 then the tumor is malignant. So in here to clarify benign has been encoded as a 0 and malignant has been encoded as a 1. So if the size of the tumor is less than 2.5 you're a 0, if it's greater than 2.5 then you're a 1. So the key takeaway is that training a logistic regression model finds these parameters a and b, the one we just assumed was 2 and minus 5 in this case, so that we can do essentially the above computation and predict which category an observation is in. Once we start with the coding, a lot of this will kind of be automated by scikit-learn. So of course in scikit-learn we do the training, but also this final prediction by solving this inequality and so on, this is automatically done in scikit-learn, so you don't really need to understand the computations in detail. Just remember the broad takeaway that logistic regression finds these parameters. Once you have the parameters, you can predict which category an observation lies within. Finally, I just want to point out that in a way, this kind of looks like linear regression in a sense. From a mathematical standpoint, logistic regression function is just doing linear regression, just ax plus b, composed with what's called a sigmoid function, which is this function here. So the illustration here, you can see a graph of the sigmoid function. This is a function that essentially starts at zero and gradually grows all the way up to converging towards the value of one. Later I'll talk more in depth about specifically the sigmoid function and how this all fits together. In the next video we'll start coding a bit and then we'll actually see how to do this concretely within scikit-learn.